Warm greetings to each and every one of you. My name is Paul Andre Zurache, and this is the Mass Unconfined uh, series where we explore the various elements that make up the celebration of the Mass in the Roman Catholic liturgy. Today we're looking at uh, the Eucharistic prayer, the third Eucharistic prayer. This Prayer was composed uh, at the request of Pope Paul VI uh, in, after 1966 when he uh, accepted the idea that there would be more than one Eucharistic prayer in the Roman Catholic liturgy. There had only been one, which is now the first Eucharistic prayer, the Roman canon. So this third Eucharistic prayer was uh, the work, basically the work of an Italian liturgist basing himself on a number of older Eucharistic prayers, both from the East and from the West. I'd like to point out two aspects that really come across uh, in this prayer. The first of the Trinitarian aspect, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are named throughout, and the three are seen as collaborating in the work of creation, salvation, and in this uh, sacrament that we are celebrating. The other is the universal aspect, you could say, or dimension. This truly is the Mass unconfined. It's not just the Church that is concerned with the celebration of the Eucharist, but the whole world, all of creation. So let's enter into this beautiful Eucharistic prayer. There is no specific um, preface assigned to this third Eucharistic prayer as there is in the second Eucharistic prayer. It's more in that sense, it is more like the first, the Roman, Catholic, uh, the Roman canon. It can be used with any preface. And uh, so we pick up after the Holy Holy, after the acclamation of the people. The priest goes on. We've just acclaimed the holiness of God. And so he goes on by saying, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. We've just said that we, the church, give you praise with the angels and the holy, holy. Here it's all you have created, the whole universe. So this is right away the universal dimension of this prayer. It rightly gives you praise because you created, you gave life to all things through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. So you see the, the Trinitarian dimension here. God created all things through his Son in the power of the Spirit. And in this whole creation, you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that the church is the people that is drawn from creation to give voice to this praise, huh? so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. So from the east to the west, from the whole world, this people gathers. And this expression, the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice offered to your name, is an echo of a prophecy in the book of Malachi. So though this text was uh, composed, the new text composed in the, in the late 60s, it it's filled with references to scripture and to other Eucharistic prayers. And so then after having uh, spoken or elaborated on the praise that we give God, uh, right away we call on the Spirit. This is the epiclesis, the invocation. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit through which you created the world, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought for your consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. This is unique to the third Eucharistic prayer. We recall, why are we doing this? Because Jesus invited us to do it. It is Jesus who, on the night before he died, said, do this in memory of me. And so we recall this motivation here. And so on the night he was betrayed, uh, this is from St. Paul. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, speaks of that night, saying it was the night he was betrayed. So we echo St. Paul here. He himself took bread and giving thanks, said the blessing, and the rest follows as the other Eucharistic prayers do. Then there's the memorial acclamation of the whole congregation, and the priest continues. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, this is, we don't find this in the second Eucharistic prayer or in the first, this, we echo the, uh, the expectation of the new coming, the second coming. So as we do this, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. So again, this note of thanksgiving, and we echo again scripture in speaking about a holy and living sacrifice. So look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile to yourself. Grant that we who are nursed by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. That's a, that's a very dense sentence. Let's unpack it. First of all, we point out that this oblation that the, that the church is making, this, uh, this offering of the body and blood of Christ, we ask God to recognize in it the very offering that Christ made of himself on the cross. So it's not a new offering. It's not a new sacrifice. It's the very, it's the unique sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice, which is made present here and now in the celebration of the Eucharist. And in his death, you reconciled yourself to us. So it really was uh, a saving event. Then grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit. So it's that second epiclesis, a second invocation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was called to act upon the bread and the wine. Now it's called to act upon us as we receive the body and blood of Christ that what that why so that we may become one body one spirit in christ this is a this is a, a quote from uh, saint paul where he speaks about becoming one body one spirit in christ growing in communion one with another becoming the body of christ saint augustine said would say become what you eat you're eating the body of christ become the body of christ and so we pray for this grace here. And again, note the Trinitarian aspect. We're calling on God to recognize in this the very gift of Jesus himself, and as we receive it, that we might be united into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And it goes on asking that the Holy Spirit also make us make us an eternal offering. We're we're, we're renewing the offering of Christ, the self-sacrifice of Christ. We are asking that we be associated with Christ in offering ourselves. And in that way, we are united to the whole communion of saints so that we might obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially, and here we name the Blessed Virgin, we name the Blessed Apostles and the Glorious Martyrs, St. Joseph, sorry, I skipped St. Joseph, then the apostles and the martyrs. And then in this Eucharistic prayer, it's written, and with saint whoever. We name the saint of the day or the, the saint patron of this parish. So instead of naming Roman saints, as we did in the Roman canon, um, here there's uh, an option of naming one saint, and that saint can vary from day to day on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for help. So we, we count on the saints to pray for us in the communion of saints as we pray for each other. Now come the intercessions. For whom do we pray? And here again, the universal dimension of this Eucharistic prayer, we start by praying for the whole world. This truly is the Mass unconfined. We gather for the glory of God and for the salvation of the world, and so we pray for the whole world. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. And then we pray for the church. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity, how to strengthen, to confirm means to strengthen the faith and the charity, the faith and the love of your pilgrim church on earth. So it's in this world that the church moves forward as a pilgrim with your servant, our Pope, and the bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy, 
and the entire people your son has gained for yourself. And now we pray for the family that is gathered here. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you for this congregation. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. So we, we ask God to, to watch over us, but us as we think of all those who are scattered throughout the world, all of God's children, we pray that God will gather them all. Saint, in the Gospel of, of John, Jesus says about, I've been sent to gather all into one. Uh, and then we pray for those who've passed away, to our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. So we pray for our brothers and our sisters in the faith, but here again, the universality of this prayer, beyond those who share our faith and who've passed away, all those, all men and women who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And, and so this prayer finishes with this uh, opening up unto the eternal kingdom of God, unto the, the ultimate reality of heaven. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through our through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, on the world, again, we, we come back to the world, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good, all that is good. So we note, uh, you know, again, the universal dimension of this prayer. We really are praying for the whole world, and we are praying to the Father in the Son, in the power, uh, to the Father through the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and this is why we end with this great doxology uh, with which we end all the Eucharistic prayers, through him, with him, and in him, Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen, I remind you, is a Hebrew word which means this is true, this is right. It's the people giving their assent to this beautiful Eucharistic prayer which the priest has just prayed in the name of the whole people of God. And so with that thought, I leave you to the next uh, episode where we'll look at the fourth Eucharistic prayer. Till then, may God bless you.